Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I plan to launch some satellites to the moon to support my future crewed lunar landing mission. We have this potential contract here eventually. Uh, so I would like to do these two contracts which are very lucrative as well in order to get some relay satellites uh, there. Though of course the mission being crewed doesn't really super require that we have comms. But anyway, it'll be helpful. We'll see. It's possible that the return stage we will leave in orbit around the moon uh, will be automated. So maybe something like that would work out. I haven't decided on what kind of architecture I want for my lunar landing yet. So there are various possibilities. Uh, but taking a look at our other available contracts, a new surface outpost on Mars seems optimistic. But science day from space around the moon we might as well pick up anyway. Uh, we should be able to do that along the way. Science day from the surface of the moon. I would like to do a a uh, sample return mission. So maybe. So we might as well. We're now at our max contracts though. Lots of rescue contracts. Um, I had upped the number of available contracts in the configuration. So we get a lot of contracts, which is good. There's a build a new orbital station around the Earth, but that's the liquid fuel one. Uh, there is an alternate one, I think. Uh, there is this first space station one. But to do that first space station one, we need short-term habitation. That's the only real unmet requirement. Uh, this says that we could do either of these two. So, yeah, as long as we do short-term habitation, we should be fine. I didn't realize our astronaut... Oh, at most level 3. At most level 3. Okay. So, all right. Anyway, let me take a look at short-term habitation and how many science points we need for that. Maybe we can get that out of some moon mission or another. Short-term habitation is all the way over here. 550 science to build a space station. I mean, I guess, I mean, it's not like even SpaceX has built a space station or something, right? I mean, I guess it does take some time. You could get crew to orbit or plan a lunar lander and everything, uh, but... Space stations are particular, I suppose. So, yep, I guess uh, we'll have to wait on that. Wow, 550. We'll have to upgrade the VAB and everything, too. I guess we can hold off on space stations. They're not the most exciting thing. Uh, unless, like, we're doing it in Principia and they can deorbit or and we have to constantly supply them, which is just a hassle, darn it. But anyway, let's uh, cook up some lunar satellites and get them on their way. Okay, so what we have here is a main satellite, but also tiny little CubeSats here. Uh, they have a reaction wheel, one of those really, really weak CubeSat reaction wheels. And then also these 40 Newton RCS ports using hydrazine. And maybe they can get into a different orbit, right? We have two different satellite orbits that we need to get into. I don't know if these are going to be enough, but worst comes to worst. Uh, they'll still be relay satellites for us and we can get them into different orbits. So retract those solar panels for now. They don't have any satellites, uh, sorry, uh, not any science on them. Uh, they are certainly satellites. Uh, I hope everything is okay with them as far as that's concerned. Oh, uh, maybe I need to put on a separate probe core though. Right, these, uh, there's just a little bus. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have the command core. I need to fix, I thought, uh, I need to fix what category that one's in. This one comes with a command core, that one doesn't. Uh, whatever slot it has left, it'll have the command core. All right, so hopefully those are all right, but in any case we'll have this one a lot of delta V on it, and there's uh, one, one kilonewton thruster, 314, and using MMH and MON3. And we have some goo containers for the science. I also put the accelerometer and thermometer just in case, but I'm pretty sure we've done most of this stuff. We'll see what science we can transmit. But, yep, that is the situation. I've gone with purple for the body because I'm leaning towards the logo. I don't have a raised aerospace logo per, per se. Uh, I had an EDB logo that was red, so we're gonna keep the upper stage red and that'll be incorporated in the logo, but I'm thinking of a red and purple logo basically, because it'll stand out and it'll be unique. So I'm uh, sort of pondering that possibility. I don't want any uh, anything that won't show up on white, gray, or black for obvious reasons. And yeah, we'll think about that. But for now, 
let us go with this rocket scheme, and this will be Lunasat. And we will build one of these first. We'll see what happens and then fix it. Other than the paint job, the rocket is still the usual uh, SE-2060 style rocket. I think our crewed landing mission will likely be in two launches. We'll send the return vehicle first, and then send the lander separately. And the return vehicle will probably be automated until a Kerbal goes in, obviously. Okay, rolling out Lunasat. We don't have any particular window to aim for. Okay, the relative inclination to the moon should be low enough. Oh, it's going down, so we might as well time warp a little bit. Okay, throttle on, SAS on, ignition. And launch. Oh, so the purple does go with the methane plumes. That's nice. Maybe I should get a more methane plume purple, or change the plumes to match the purple of the rocket. <laughs> Priorities, right? Okay, double checking staging. I changed this to a single bearing piece that will stay attached. Okay, separation and ignition. So again, that was the SC2060 engine. This is once again the engine 2 vacuum, which we've been using a lot. For good reason. I mean, uh, according to what they advertise, it is a 365 second ISP Carolox engine, so. Why not? Why would you not use that? Okay, fairing set. I added a little Arduino core to this stage. Oh, there, there it is. CubeSat command core. So, if we wanted to deorbit this stage eventually, we could do that. Nope, I've got to remember that we're not using the full stage time to get to orbit here. We tilt down somewhat. We won't have quite enough for the translunar injection on this stage, so we'll have to finish up with the probe. That's a photon interplanetary stage. Though, as I understand it, I guess they're going to be using a monopropellant, a green monopropellant on there. I don't know what that is, but uh, not MH and Mon 3. But this engine is not the engine that's supposed to go with the photon interplanetary stage anyway. It's just a generic one kilonewton thruster that we're using and we're filling the tanks with whatever we need to. So yeah. Uh, one positive thing is that the tanks on it are relatively similar size, so it's not un uh, unreasonable for the tanks to be containing the propellants that we intend to use. So, that's good. Okay, so actually we might have just wanted to keep burning here. But let's see. Uh, yeah, we should just go. <laughs> we, we'll figure that out as we burn, I think. We have to figure out exactly how to get into the orbit set at once, so. Okay, RCS on. And ignition. Okay, nope, no more of that. Okay, next stage. Next stage. So this on its own has about 3,000 meters per second. Well, 2,900. That should certainly be enough to get one of those contracts done. But yeah, they're in uh, interesting orbits. There's one really high-flung one out there. And then a really tight one down here. We don't have any bottom-facing thrusters. That one's going retrograde. I'll think about which one we want to do first, but I want to deorbit that other stage, so... Oh, we don't have control right now. Oh, I forgot to put electric charge. Ah, we need to put a battery on it as well, not just the control core. Oh, well, no luck there then. Okay. Right, so back to the main mission then. So we're going to do a mid-course adjustment to try and hit one of those orbits. Yeah, I think for now it's easier to get to this one down here first. 
Okay, yeah, I mean, that looks like a good approach for that one, so let's not overlook that. We can get something done easily. We should just go ahead. I trust it understands that this is a new probe. Yeah, it's check marked the main thing. We just have to get into the right orbits. Well, it's close enough. We don't have bottom facing thrusters again, so we can't just uh, puff them a little bit to correct that. Well, that looks like a fairly good start. We might need to boost the periapsis a little bit to satisfy it, but we can start off like that. Okay, head on to the moon. This all works out. We can take a look at a sample return mission. Maybe we should just test a lander like that. Oh, we're losing power. Um, why are we losing power? We're recharging like this. It's one of those things where at high warp it does something different. Yeah. When I go to this level of warp, it drains it for some reason. I don't understand. Uh, well, it's going to be a problem, isn't it? Maybe if we, like, rotate it, it won't do that? I don't know. No, it's still draining it. Okay, we are approaching lunar periapsis. We have other satellites around, so hopefully they'll help. Okay, yeah, we seem to have a relay available, so we'll make use of that. Seems like it'll be good through the burn. And ignition. And let's shut down right there. Well, it's certainly not satisfied. Well, I wanted 118. Let's just start off with that. 180 degree inclination. Okay, that's 118. All right, so clearly we're not doing well enough. We've, we've got plenty of ignitions on this one kilonewton thruster, so that's good. Uh, we need to get to apoapsis and then sort of circularize. Um, no, okay, a little bit more. Okay, now it's happy. All right. Uh, so we just have to wait for it to accept stability. All right. So the next one, well, we should try and transmit some science. Um, that's This uh, gravity scan hasn't been done before over Oceanus Procellarum, so... All right. Sending that. Oh, that takes a long time from this antenna, huh? Let's see about the goo. Oh, the goo is new. Goo feels right at home here, apparently. Okay, well, let's transmit what goo signs we can. Okay, and then I'm gonna plop off one of these guys. Ooh, I was afraid of that. I set the impulse to zero. Now it's on a deorbiting orbit. Oh, those plates are not aligned properly. Shoot. Oh, how did they get angled like that? I have no idea. That's weird. Okay, but we need to be prograde here. Uh-oh. They're enabled. Great. Oh, I can turn it. Okay, seems like it would have had plenty of Delta V, incidentally. And for now it's recharging just fine. So we've got a little satellite here for relay purposes. And we've already gotten too distance from the other thing. Hopefully it's not too imbalanced. It only has one little satellite on it now. Okay, so what we need to do with this is get it to that high orbit. At least that target orbit is mostly circular. That should be a good start. Make sure comms will be alright. Uh, maybe not. We no longer have that relay satellite on this side. Let's see. We will wait in orbit. Maybe then it'll come around. Or maybe we can do it from the opposite side. It'll be safer. And go. Well, the RCS is compensating. It looks like it can handle it, though, with having that one satellite on that end. It's too bad there isn't a sample return mission thing. I guess 
I mean, the U.S. didn't really do one of those, the Soviets did. The U.S. did their sample return mission as part of their crewed landing mission. So, but, uh, yeah, I just got the contracts from RP-0 and just adapted them, but, yeah, maybe a sample return mission from the surface of the moon should be a thing as a contract. Okay, and shut down. Oop, a little bit off there. Okay. Okay, just kill rotation, please. Uh, maybe a little bit more prograde. Okay. So, up there, not perfect there. Well, that looks like a pretty good match to me. 330 meters per second only. Now it can recharge on the fifth level of time warp. This isn't exactly how CubeSats were meant to be, but... Well, making sure they had that fuel uh, certainly saved the other one. After this, I think I'll leave this CubeSat in this orbit and then move the photon interplanetary stage into a more polarish orbit to give a diversity of communication support. Okay, I'm satisfied with that much. It's fulfilled that one for us. And let's let go of this cube. Uh, let's make sure that its antenna is on first. Idea. And then let go of this CubeSat. Wow. Okay. That brought its periapsis all the way down to 4,000 from 30,000. But that's alright. I think I'll lift it back up to the high orbit though. Okay. Well, that's lopsided as heck, but... It'll work. Just get the photon stage into some other orbit. Still spinning around because of what happened, but uh, let's observe Mystery Goo. Ah, uh, we get a little bit of science from that. High over the moon. And other science? No, not right now. Though, if we recover some of that science, it'd be worth something to us. Okay, that seems like a good start to me. I'm just going to circularize it. Okay, that will give us plenty of comm lines from the moon. Hopefully they won't all be out of communication at the same time, but who knows, you know. It isn't the most well-planned constellation ever. Okay, so this is recharging right now. It's all nice and legit. Let's go back to the Space Center and see what we can do next. Well. We've got an interesting new wrinkle here. The other station contract that required liquid fuel on board has gone away. And instead, we have a station contract that just requires antenna docking port can generate power and facility supporting at least five Kerbals. We don't even have to have the Kerbals on board at the same time. And it's not paying great, but it's better than any other station contract that I'm likely to get. Uh, so, well, I mean, until we get this one. Uh, so, yeah, maybe we should just do that. I don't know if that will invalidate the first station. I mean, I don't, it doesn't say anything about you can't have another station, but, you know. Anyway, so let's try this. We're going to build a space station out of the Lynx unprotected. Well, I say unprotected. I mean without the aero shell. And so then they can EVA out of it. Oh, by the way, I've been working on a lander. Let's not talk about this just yet. I'm thinking about it uh, as a lunar lander, but I'm not sold on the prospect. I, I was inspired by the JWST uh, sort of purple foil that it has. Uh, its thermal protection is partly purple, so we're gonna we're at, we're gonna go with the purple motif because it's bold. Darn it! Uh, but anyway, so we want to have a space station with these, this sort of cabin. Then again, it's very expensive already, much more than the contract is paying us. But we'll go like that. Shiny purple this time. Okay, we don't really have the most wonderful solar panels yet. We've got that science queued up, but we're gonna have to put up with... Um of a more makeshift deal here. These have 630 watts. I don't want to get in the way of that thruster though. 
It could do with some fuel, though. I mean, it's got uh, RCS and methane and oxygen. Not a whole lot, but it's got some. We might want a little bit of additional propulsion. It'd be nice if the engines on these use methane and oxygen as well, since the Lynx capsules already do, but I don't think we can swing that. 169 meters per second. Well, that'd be enough to complete orbit or something. 201. Well, I mean, in nine minutes, though, keeping in mind. Let's have supplementary RCS. You know what? Uh, it's a shame we won't be able to use those RCS ports. Uh, maybe we'll have both systems. Yeah, we'll have a separate RCS block attached to these, just in case. I think I'm gonna make this tank bigger and just underutilize it. Pretend that they have to go through it and all. So I'll only have it at 50% utilization. But making that bigger makes me feel a little bit better. And we'll try and go for a year here. That way, if some incident occurs, they can stay here while we build a new thing. The build time of this is already 360 days. We'll say that, it, it, I mean, of course, we're not including the rocket here, but that it should have enough supplies to equal its build time. That sort of makes sense. Okay. So that is our station. <laughs> it looks like a station, right? <laughs> don't don't answer that. Okay, so Earth Station One. I guess the Lynx rocket will do. The rocket itself is only nineteen thousand. Maybe we should undersupply the station initially and send some more supplies up. We should have a supply vessel. Let's see if we can use this rocket if we undersupplied the station. Okay, yeah, I think I'd rather do that. So we'll lock those for now. Wonder if I should put parachutes on the payload to ensure that we don't lose it. Could be a good policy. We don't have any RCS on this stage. We kept this one simple. Um, 0.72 is pushing it. And we we're sort of relying on that 271 from the payload, even though it takes nine minutes to deliver it. I think we should just put two boosters on. I want to actually pick a purple. Not nail down which purple I'm using, actually. Well, it's a thing. Okay, well, it's certainly more expensive than the contract is paying us, but I'm interested to see if we can get it done. So we're going to build one of these and see if it works. In the meantime, we'll be completing some technologies that will help us to get our moon mission done. We especially want the new rocketry, which will give us Hydrolox engines, which I like. So our technology, we have heavy rocketry unlocking. Uh, we probably wanted Earth Station 1 to be on top there. Okay. So there's heavy rocketry for next time, and then Advanced Electrics will give us better solar panels. Which we could have used for the station, but, you know. We can attach it. We've got docking ports, so we can attach it later. I don't think there's another technology that we can get for 96 that we wanted. Miniaturization, I mean, we've got tiny RCS, 4 Newtons. We really want to optimize those little CubeSats. Heat management systems. If we are trying to get to the short-term habitation, I guess recycling, but it's got nothing in it right now. It requires any of these. We could go for storage technology and then to logistics and then get to short-term habitation. Or I guess we can go through high power electrics here so we could just do that high power electrics is probably the most useful um well it's got a fuel cell 
some of these others are not quite obviously useful, but it's got the big solar panels. So that's nice, but Tundra Inflatable Storage Module, not bad. These are the USI parts and also the TAC life support containers. Hmm. I think I'll save up the science for now. Not sure which one I want to get between those. I think it's one of those two, but I'm not sure which one. Let us roll out our space station and hope that this can be done safely. It's very expensive and everything. Sort of a bright and cheery rocket, really. So we'll get it in line with the moon, just for convenience sake. Oh, timing-wise, we're not bad either. Not the same timing as last time. Well, the sun is in a different position because um, over the course of the year, it sort of advances. Okay, looks good to me now. Assay us on, throttle is up, ignition. We have six engines. And launch. And lots of thrust to weight ratio. We are past the speed of sound. One other thing we can do is there is a contract for a crewed lunar orbit. We can pick that up and do it, but I think the time frame on that is fairly short, so we need to make sure we're ready to go on that before we pick up the contract. Okay, booster set. And they're off. Uh, the plume is sort of more of a lavender here. <laughs> Not quite the same purple. Hmm. Okay, fairing separation. Actually, maybe not the best time at 5G. I should just wait until the next stage. Just wanted to see the stage time and all. The fairings were getting in the way of that. Uh, the shininess, uh, because of the shininess of the purple, it makes it look like a stripe of purple and then black surrounding it. Interesting. Alright, separation and ignition. Well, we are looking good still. Uh, two pods, we might need to attach some solar panels too. I don't know if uh, we have enough solar panel reef for two pods like this. We really need the better solar panels. Right now, nothing is getting any sunlight though. Oh, we had some room to spare on this. We could have probably carried some more of the food, water, and oxygen. Actually, maybe I'll tilt up extra and try and get into a nice higher orbit on one side. Have this stage deorbit. Okay. And shut down. That should deorbit that. Okay, separation. We'll prepare those thrusters. Alright. Okay, good enough so far. Posting to Apoapsis, where we should have lots of comms. <laughs> uh, actually, let's get rid of some lines here. Okay, well, that site will do. Okay, ignition. Oh, my those not going. Are they not pressure-fed tanks? Gosh darn it. All right, well, we're on RCS. Those engines aren't going to work. The sort of iridescent purpliness of a shiny purple tank is be not so bad. Oh, good thing I put the supplementary RCS on. Okay, well, we've made orbit at least. But I'd like to get a little bit higher than just the bare minimum. But it's already checkmarked the whole thing. Apparently we're providing so little thrust that Canada is stable. So yes, we have fulfilled the contract for a new orbital station around the Earth. I'll continue burning this off camera uh, so that I, I, maybe we'll circularize. We'll see how far we get, how much patience I have. But for now, with this done and whoop, with uh, new satellites in orbit around the moon and a fairly decent bank account, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.